Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing DASP3 in the one-minute pool in ICC. First game of the session, we are back on ICC after a little hiatus. Um, actually haven't been going in order on my videos alternating ICC and uh, Lee Chess lately. But, um, I don't know. I'm not going to be too strict about it. I think the Lee Chess tourneys are honestly like more fun <laughs> than ICC these days. So, hope you guys forgive me if I play those with a bit more frequency, perhaps. But I still like the competition that ICC offers in the bullet pool. So here we're at. Um, I actually played a little bit when I was um, away, so that's why my rating is kind of high. 26-22, decent rating. Let's see if we can bring some heat down on that pawn. I'm going to actually, I'm going to keep the knights on the board. And maybe, hmm, got to be wary of F5, but I want to try to, I want to do something on the queen side. Okay, he's going to bring this knight in here. But doesn't that lose a pawn? Yeah, I think it does. Check. Because now that's with check, so he can't take on e6. And yeah, I won a pawn out of this transaction. Let's take here. Okay, we'll take there. Check. He can take f7. We're still up a check. pawn, but I don't know. Our king's a little bit open. So is his, though. He's going to try to attack. Time. Let's see if we can offer a trade. Doubtfully takes it, but you never know. Let's come back here. I'm going to play queen or rook f8 if he repeats. He does. And then we'll trade. He can take h7 or a5, either one. Check. Okay, now I win a bunch check. of pawns with check. Check. Let's give a check here. Check. check. I'm trying to do this. See if I can run with my h pawn. Check. Like maybe even create some mating threats. Check. 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 I'm lagging a little Check. bit. This is not good. So now I have a, a mate and two threat. Check. 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 Hmm. Check. 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 Mm-hmm. Check. 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 Got to run with our king. Check. I'm lagging massively, guys. Check. 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 Yeah, this is bad. Hmm. My time was going down like crazy. Let me check my ping for a second. He was moving very quick, but I'm pretty sure I was lagging round about there. Yeah, I'm lag spiking right now. I'm going to try to play through it and see what happens. I mean, that was a pretty fast game. 71 moves. But uh, if the lag gets too bad, I'm going to have to make this a short session. Okay, Um. let's take a look at a game while we wait for another one. Uh, Kava, okay. This is Anton Kovalyov from uh, Canada. I believe he still plays for Canada. I'd say like maybe a, he's probably early 20s, Grandmaster. I've played him over the board before and on my uh, bullet videos here on ICC. Hmm. This rook is caught in the crossfire, so black's going to be going going down in exchange. Actually, more. Black um, was just falling for queen takes f7, king takes f7, bishop takes d5, pawn takes d5. And with that rook on c1, they could have played rook into c7 check, but the move that uh, white played was enough to force resignation anyways. Okay, let's do this crazy line, this g4 variation. He definitely likes Nimzo setups, Kava. So we'll see what we can get going with this method of play. It's a little bit crude, but... It's fun nonetheless. I um, wonder if he'll castle on the queen side. Just preventing him from doing that. Let's play d4. Okay, now maybe I can go and attack this guy. If queen e4... Okay, that's what he wants. I see. Okay, well, oh, bishop takes f3. Blundered that. Ooh, that's a really... That's a really bad development for me. Now he has bishop d5. He can protect his knight and his bishop. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, let's take... Well, okay, let's take once. Sure. This king is a little questionable, but this shouldn't be anything. Ooh, this move actually is kind of nice. Check. Because I take here with check. That's key. Ooh, he blundered pretty big right there. Definitely should not have allowed me to do that. Check. What I just did. Okay, now I'm winning. I'm up a piece. That's a crazy turnaround. <laughs> we'll take it. Hey, why not? All right, so we have a semi-slav. Let's give a check here. Check. Just see how he blocks. 
Um, let's go here. Sure. Uh, I guess he has B4, doesn't he? B4 might have been strong right there to disrupt my coordination. Mm -hmm. Now he does it, but I win this pawn. Okay, let's take here. Uh, let's go to knight f6, just to guard e4 a little bit. He can take now, though, and this knight is probably coming into the d6 square. I'm willing to give a pawn back in order to dissipate some of the pressure going on. Um, man, he can, like, swing that rook over. Better play f5 to protect my king. If not, I might regret it. Hmm. All right, let's just run this pawn. I honestly don't see a lot of good plans for me, so I'm hoping that this A pawn provides some counterplay, because strategically I'm like busted. I mean, his knight is amazing, and yeah, I don't have much to show the position. Okay, let's run it. Keep running. Offer a queen trade. You can just take C8. You can have that if you wanted. Um, Time warning. Okay, let's bring the bishop in here. Maybe rook b8 can be played. Go after his knight. And he's going to simplify to an endgame. Well, at least it's like, oh, I dropped that pawn. I meant to play king f7 if he had gone there. Okay, definitely losing now. Maybe I can make him work for it a little Check. bit. Check. Hmm. Check. Check. Okay, we'll try to bring our king in a little. Check. Ah, Check. he's Rook here. Oh, okay, resign that game. Hmm, if I hadn't lost that uh, e-pawn, maybe I could have held out, but I was down on time anyways. Maybe my pawn snatching in the opening just came back to bite me. I don't know. I won a3 and b4, but it didn't turn out so well. I'll repeat that line if he wants to repeat that. Because that was pretty fun. Let's go here. I'm not going to play g5 quite yet. I'm going to let that knight sit on f6. Let it think about what it's done. <laughs> um, okay, bishop e3. Probably knight here is a good idea. Maybe a4, a5? Could be decent. Let's try it. He's blockading pretty well. Let's bring this in. Keep chasing him. Just trying to weaken that long diagonal. So now I get bishop g2 and attack this knight. Let's see if he takes. Okay, we'll drop this guy back. I have a nice grip on the position, I think. Maybe rook g7 coming? Yeah, this is looking really nice. Okay, knight takes f6. Ooh, disaster for black. Beautiful. Yeah, you can't move the queen because queen f8, bishop takes e6. All right, so 2-1 and one against Kaba. Yeah, this is just a really enjoyable variation, this g4 thrust. I played at OTB, too. I have a game against um, I am Arian Tari from Norway, from uh, the Reykjavik Open 2012 or 13. I can't remember which year, but I won that game. It was also nuts and a lot of fun. I wonder what's going on at the best list right now. Let's have a look at the best list. I'm not active on here at the moment, otherwise I'd be somewhere... Wow, lots of players over 2,600. Look at that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 players in the 2,600 range. Double entendres is 2,755. Unknown player. Um, and then leverage, 2,811, right up there. Leverage always plays to seem to play seem to play just enough games to stay active, um, but not much more. Although recently, whoa, he played quite a bit. That's unusual. I don't know how he maintains a 2,800 bullet rating. It's a mystery to me. Someone said this guy got banned on chess.com. Um, I've heard that a couple times, actually. So <laughs> who knows what's going on with him? Clearly, someone's uh, pretty good if that's actually a human account. They haven't been banned on ICC, so I guess we got to give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay, let's play d5 against drunk chess. Trade those knights. But 2,800 is, is a real difficult rating to maintain. I mean, that's like... The only person I've seen who's been able to maintain a 2,800 plus rating is Nakamura. Like, no one else has done that that I'm aware of in the one-minute pool in recent history. Let's bring this knight into c5. This is a great blockading square. 
We have a nice edge against their pawn structure with our good knight. Mm, let's play h3. We'll play this slow. Hard for black to make any sort of moves, because if knight e7, I have knight b7 and this rook is trapped. So let's just play b4, prop up that knight. And he actually did that. And it's hard to resist knight d7, because it looks like a repositioning move that should be played, but it just happens to be bad there. He can move the knight into a discovered attack on my queen, but I can just move my queen. I don't think there's any, like, devastating discoveries he can do. Let's double up with tempo on their queen. Yeah, now they can't move this knight. This move looks painful. Um, we can just do that. Go after f7, maybe. Or just safeguard our bishop. Maybe bishop c4 next move. It's nice that we have this left move, h3, so we don't have to worry about anything back rank related. Okay, back in the pool. Let's see if Kava or any of these guys are still playing. Oh, Kyle Ochoa. This dude beat me in blitz the other day. So if I play you in bullet, man, it's going down. I need some revenge. <laughs> Yeah, he uncorked the uh, way ye like rook takes f7 move on me. That hurt. Hurt big time. All right, Kava once again. I'm going to play this bishop f5 line. Him and I seem to have pretty consistent battles in the opening. He doesn't like to take on uh, e4 right away. He tries to delay that. Or on g6, I mean, right away. He definitely tries to delay that. Probably rightly so. Um, hmm. I guess I'll play bishop d6. Just attack there. So he gets, um, let's whisk our king this way. So I get the use of the d5 square, but how great is that? Maybe I'll go for e5. Seems like the only plan that's going to cause him any sleepless nights. Let's take here. I need to attack. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sack that b pawn, but he can't really take it, can he? Because um, I have bishop h2, this nice little trick, if he does take it. Okay, so let's go here. Mm, this is going to get interesting. Okay, let's see if we can trade. Oh, wait, no, I hung my rook. Ah, uh, don't do that pre-move. Oh, boy. <laughs> now i got to just go for, like, some Hail Mary mate. Okay, he can sack here if he wants. Check. Or he can do what he's currently doing. All right, we'll go for this. Why not? Maybe I can swindle him. Check. Time warning. Maybe. Queen takes h3 coming next. Oh my gosh. Oh, well, he can take Check. g6, though. Ah, he has rook h7. Ah, okay, nice. Nicely done. I guess I should have taken on b6. I realized my pre-move was bad too late. <laughs> I was only anticipating, like, a takes b6, not c takes b6. Whoops. So I should have played something like... Queen c6, maybe, but actually, I think I have some decent threats against this king. Maybe queen h4 right here. So we're uh, even Steven with Kava so far this session. It's about 9 o'clock at night, US Central Time. Decent number of players in the pool. Kava again. All right, I'll continue this little thematic match. Oh, he's, he's going off beat. <laughs> he's uh, decided to go with a5. Which actually, you know, he kind of um, is in like a normal-ish setup now, I suppose. Okay, let's just centralize. Not entirely sure how I'm going to handle this position, so maybe I'll maneuver my knight around to... Let's first let's make way for this knight to retreat if necessary, but maybe I'll maneuver it around somewhere. Can't really take here because I have queen c1. Oh, but he has that move. Support that guy. Okay. Eh, position is not so good here. Hmm. Okay, let's go here and see if we can sneak in queen h7. It's not going to happen. Probably bishop f5 is a good reply. Okay, we're getting a trade. I'm still trying to use that pin for something or other. Um, I guess I'll go here. No trade. Can't do that. We gotta go after him. Try to get this knight. This knight is the bane of my existence right now. Bishop takes d4 is good if he had seen that. This is also good too, the way he's playing it. Go attack this bishop. No, oh, I can't take there. 
Now I can. This is gonna get weird. Time warning. Oh, Check. He is. Um, hmm. Guess I'll just try to defend. Bring this over. Or g4, maybe. Oh, he is bishop f4. Ouch. Or that. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll, I guess I'll play a couple moves. Oh, he has to take my queen. Oh, man, just dropping everything. All right, Kava. <laughs> You're beating me two to three right now. Hopefully I get one or two more games against him before I wrap up this session. That would be nice. Hmm. He faked me out. He played a5 move one like he was going to go for something truly weird. But then it didn't happen. And he just like got a normal setup. That's crafty. That's good thinking, actually. So I'm at 2577, losing some rating points. But, you know, nothing, nothing too substantial. Guess we'll watch this game for a moment. This looks tough for white. Black has a nice position right now. Pressure on the g3 pawn, doubled rooks on the g-file. No semblance of coordination in this region for white. Ye. And you just had to play f3. Bishop c5 is winning at least an exchange there. I guess maybe white could have played king f1, but that looked horrible. Oh yeah, queen's coming into d4. And Juan Seaglas has no time to. Okay, let's play something different this time around. Play like a Maroxy Vine system. Maybe take on d4 and then bishop c6. Normal stuff, right? I think a5 is usually played first. I play this way more often from the white side. So this is a bit unusual for me. Let's see if he wants to trade queens. Um, hmm. A4, I guess. Drop this back. I'm hoping he doesn't just take over the game with his two bishops, but it's kind of looking like he is. Um, rook here is a problem. That's a big problem. Yeah, his bishop a7 is the issue. This knight is a hobbled horse. Yeah, bishop a7 is really bad for me. I gotta get some activity. Hmm. Alright. Need to do something here. He could take e7. This is just not looking good at all. Time warning. Yeah. This is what I get for playing a system I'm really not too confident in. Okay, this is awful. I can't stop that b-pawn. Um, you know, normally when the knight comes into d5 and you get to trade it, it's okay for black, but I probably have to know more than what I did. Maybe queen b4 is not so good. I mean, after rook c4, it seems like a good reply. Then he's on his way to doubling up the rooks on the c-file. I guess I should probably play the queen back to d8. That's normally what you do in this line. So queen back to d8, just tuck it away. I'll play two or three more games and call it a session. These guys are still playing. They get paired every game. Kyle and Juan. This time Juan looks like he has the better of it with the two bishops. Equal material. Could be 94 for white. Pawn structure favors black too, and white's majority is kind of crippled. But white has a 10 second time advantage, so I'm betting on him. And I think this, this Grandmaster is just a little bit slow on the clock. Let's go back to this system, see if he wants to repeat this. He does not. Try to get e4 in. This is good fun. Uh, let's go, okay, we'll just play this line, main line. F4, G4, G5. It's usually what happens. Bishop F2 to guard E4. This is all fun. Well, this version of this line looks pretty good, unless he can like strike with D5 somewhere, but I doubt that's ever good. Hmm. Let's take, and then we'll bring the knight into d5, sure. Maybe play for like a positional edge of some sort. Hmm. I'm going to try to play g6, bust through. 
somewhere. Actually, let's go here and maybe f6 and then knight f5. This looks good. Now we're on the attack. He's got to watch himself big time. Um, let's hide the king. Let's get some firepower going down the g-file. All those pieces are very far away. I mean, bishop f3 and then queen to g2. How does he defend? Queen g8 coming. If he moves the bishop anywhere, I take it. Bishop h6, knight takes h6. He just resigned. This looks like he got caught with a lot of his pieces on the other side of the board. I think he's still got a one-game edge. I'll play two more games. Oh, Songlo is playing. Mr. Songlo, I haven't seen you around for a while. Songlo is the master of the flank openings, as you can see from his opening moves here, h4, h5. <laughs> He's very good at that. Songlo and Tu Huang are like uh, kindred spirits, except Songlo is even crazier than Tu Huang, if you remember Tu Huang from uh, many of my videos. They both are kind of like flank style players, and they both like to castle queenside all the time. But Songlo, he's just like, he has these systems. Okay, he's getting worked in this game. But uh, he has these systems that he's really proficient at. What is going on here? I think White's just getting rocked now. This knight is trapped, practically. Yeah, he just resigned. Okay, now we're playing Juan Glez. My strategy in this game is just to try to play fast. And, I don't know, beat him on the clock if necessary. Okay, let's put the knight on a5. I know it seems crude to say that you're just going to try to beat someone on the clock, but honestly, like based on the pace of play I've seen from him, I don't think that's a bad strategy. Let's play bishop a6. This is kind of like a weird, almost bingo gambit-like position, isn't it? Takes to the pawn, interesting. Uh, I guess I'll take here and then just win this pawn back, but he's going to play e5. Yeah, that's, I don't know. I don't know if this is good for me or not. Hmm. Okay, we'll put the knight in on c4, see if we induce a trade. I gotta watch my dark squares. Like, clearly the dark squares around my king are questionable. Um, that's a good double attack. Ooh, yeah, that's, ugh. Okay, now I definitely gotta watch the dark squares around my king. Let's play h5. Don't get back rank check made it now, John. Bishop h6, he's threatening queen here. Um, this looks kind of forced, doesn't it? Queen e4, attacking, double attack. Yeesh. Yikes. Time um, warning. Okay, got to hold both those points. Oh, and he's killing me on the clock, too. Go figure. <laughs> Sorry I underestimated you, Mr. Glez. All right, I'm attacking his rook, so at least for the moment I'm not losing my knight. Oh, good reply. Didn't see that coming. Dang. This guy's harming me. Check. Right. Check. We'll try to play this end game. This isn't going to work too well. Whoa, my clock is like running. I think there's some lag going on once again. Not that it really Check. matters in this one. This would be an absolute miracle if I somehow held this game, but I doubt it's going to happen. Just pre-moving like crazy now. Check. I'm going to throw in this. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, ridiculous game. I'm sorry, Juan. Yeah. One with 0.7 on the clock, but that's a bullet. And, you know, if you enter the pool, it's, that can happen sometimes. All right. This is going to be my last game. This last one here. It's one of the dirtiest flags I've ever had. Hmm. Now this is some proper chess. They're playing some theory in the Nimzo. I played this position from the white side. It's kind of nice to master from the black side too because it's an IQP position. Um, it comes with its own set of dynamics. IQP stands for isolated queen pawn, if you didn't know that. Um, here, taking on f6 maybe, and then knight d7 would have been good just a moment ago. Bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, knight d7, forking the, the rook and the bishop. The thing about these IQP positions is um, if you're white, you have to 
I think the onus is greater on white because they're the ones who possess the IQP. They have to play with a certain sense of urgency. Uh, this is very interesting. I definitely like white's position still. He's got an attack. He uh, He's not even down anything, actually. He's attacking f7, so black will defend that. They run with the king, king e7. d5 is a good move. Now he should just play g3 or something, guard his, his pawn. Hmm. Okay, JJ OK is going to be our last uh, opponent. Let's give him a Scandi. The QA5 Scandinavian. See what happens. Okay, he's, um, he's playing kind of a short variation type line. I don't do too well against this system sometimes, but we'll see. Yeah, castle's queenside. D4 is kind of hanging, but I'm not going to take it. I wouldn't be surprised to see him play H4 right here. Just go on the offensive. Um, let's play knight d5. Try to block up the center a little bit. I wasn't comfortable with him having like... Like if I had played knight d7, maybe knight takes f7 would have been good. Can't tell if he's playing really slow or if it's just lag. Now I win material. Knight takes d5 is not a problem. I just take with my e-pawn. Queen takes, bishop e6. So he kind of walked into the f6 idea, unfortunately for him. Now I can just take a bunch of stuff. This knight is an issue. Let's bring this in. Threaten a queen trade. Okay, that didn't do anything for me. Uh, back to the drawing board. <laughs> okay, at least I can bring my queen over for defense. Um, oh, he's going to get rook g3 in. Gross. Okay, let's do this. See if he'll trade with me. Let me play rook f4. That's a useful defensive move, I think. And now if rook g3, I have rook g4 at least. So that's cool. Attack this guy. Hmm. I guess queen defends it laterally. Uh, let's go a6 just to guard that pawn. All right, so I'm escaping here. If he takes on e5, what's going to happen? I'm going to pin him eventually. d3 coming after he moves his bishop. Oh, he pre-moved it. <laughs> Let's go for mate. Queen g7 Check. is not mate, so... All right, I'll see if he's going to let me mate him on d2. All right, let's tabulate the results of that session. So I played 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 games, and I won 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 with a draw. Uh, so 6 wins, 4 losses, and a draw. I believe it was 4. Yep. All of them at the hands of Kava. We should have lost to Juan Ciclas, but... All right, am I active now in the one minute category? I am. So let's just see where we fall, just out of curiosity. Eh, number 10 ish, if I'm eyeballing this. Not bad. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.